just pray that you take this challenge now and use it to speak to our hearts and to prepare us for the Vacation Bible School that's coming up this next week and help us to be in tune with you as we work, as we serve for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. Here in Acts chapter number 28, remember once again that Paul has finally reached the destination that they started out on when they left Caesarea months ago. It was Rome. They reached the city of Rome, and Paul is here, and he has uh, gotten a place of his own as he, is, he has been entrusted to one of the Roman soldiers there. And after three days in Rome, he calls for the chief of the Jews. In other words, the, the chief Jewish men to come to his home, the place where he lodged. They make their way to his house, and the Bible told us in Acts chapter number 28 and verse number 17, he began to speak to them and to explain to them why he was there in Rome. And remember on Sunday night that it all was summed up with what he said in verse number 20. In verse number 20, he said, because that for the hope of Israel, he was in Rome because of the hope of Israel or for the hope of Israel. And remember on Sunday night, we saw that the hope of Israel was not a thing, but was a person. From the Old Testament, we saw how that the hope of Israel was referring to God himself, that Israel's hope was God. And tonight, can I say that Israel's hope in the 21st century is Jehovah God? And can I say that America's hope tonight is Jehovah God? Or as the Bible tells us in Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope, talking about Jesus Christ. Hey, our hope tonight is not in the White House. Our hope tonight is not in any of our politicians. Our hope tonight is not in the American dollar. Our hope tonight is in God Almighty. With that in mind, Paul tells these men, he says, I'm here because God wanted me to be here. And remember on uh, Sunday night, we talked about the fact that he was willing to be falsely accused. He was willing to be compelled or constrained to appeal unto Caesar, and he was willing to be bound. He was willing to do all of these things for God, for God's sake, for the sake of the gospel, because God asked him to do it. The result was he ended up here in Rome. Remember we said on Sunday night, if Paul at any time had said, you know what, I'm tired of being falsely accused by these Jews here in Jerusalem. At the very beginning of this journey, if he had said that, if he had decided he had had enough, he would have never made it to Rome, where he is now. He would have never had this audience that he has now. Remember, if he had ever decided that he did not want to appeal to Caesar, and if he had not been compelled by God to appeal to Caesar, he would have never ended up with those men on that ship in the midst of that tempest, that uh, tempest known as Eurachladon, he would have never been there for those 270 plus men who needed a beacon of hope in a dark time. He would have never ended up on the, uh, the island country of Melita or Malta to help those natives, those barbarous people out. He would have never ended up in these places if he would have chosen his will over God's will. With all that in mind, remember we said on Sunday night that here Paul was, and these men respond after he tells them, I'm here, and the reason I'm here is for God. They tell him, hey, we haven't received any letters saying anything bad about you, Paul. Uh, we didn't get any letters from anybody out of Judea, the region that you came from. Remember, Jerusalem was in the region of Judea. And they said, we haven't gotten any letters out of Judea saying anything bad about you. We didn't, we didn't suspect anything about you. In fact, in verse number 22, they said, But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest. We are ready to listen. I'm telling you what, you tell a preacher you're ready to listen, and you better get ready for a long message, amen? Because that's what a lot of preachers are looking for. They're looking for people that are ready to listen. Outside of faithfulness, uh, people that are willing to listen, that's probably the second biggest trait that a preacher is looking for. And these guys say, hey, we want to know what you think. And then they go on to explain what it is that they want him to talk about to them. For as concerning this sect, 
Remember that word sect is sort of a short version of the word section. That's this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. What sect were they referring to? The sect known as Christianity. Wow, this is an open door. These guys want to hear what Paul has to say about Christianity. I mean, if you ever wanted to hear anybody speak about Christianity outside of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, Paul probably would have been numero uno on the list of people you'd want to hear speak about it. Because this was a man who condemned Christians. This was a man who hauled Christians off to prison. And then he testified against them, making sure that they were martyred, making sure that they were murdered. And then he converted to this sect. He converted to Christianity himself. Not only that, he was a very learned man. Remember, he was a Pharisee. He was a very religious man. He knew scriptures. Hey, if anybody you'd want to hear talk about Christianity, it would be Paul. And these men say, that's what we desire. We want to hear from you. Once again, God brought Paul through all of the things that he did on this last journey that most people refer to as the fourth missionary journey so he could get to this body of men who said, we want to hear what you have to say. Don't forget, as we said on Sunday night, that so often God takes us through trials and takes us through testings because eventually he's going to bring us to someone who wants to hear the truth. You know, these guys, they weren't right there at the first leg of this journey. They weren't there in Myra where he switched ships and got on the Alexandrian ship. They weren't there in Crete. They weren't there in Melita. They weren't there in Syracuse. He had to go through all of these different things, these testings, these trials, before he finally got to these men who are now saying, we want to know the truth. And so often in our lives as Christians, we get excited about the Lord and we read our Bible and we pray and we're walking with God and we're saying, God, I can't wait to tell someone about Jesus. And it seems like we get closed door after closed door after closed door when it comes to witnessing or telling family members or friends or people about Jesus. And we start thinking to ourselves, where are the Philippian jailers? Where are the people that just say, hey, we want to hear what you have to say? A lot of times... It takes testings. It takes tryings before we get to those people that are ready to hear the truth. Paul had to go through so much before he got to that point. By the way, if you quit before you get to those people, they'll probably never hear the truth. What if Paul had quit? What if he would have said, you know what, Lord, this is enough. I'm telling these guys not to leave the Fair Havens, and they're leaving anyhow. They don't want to listen to me. If he would have said right in the middle of Eurachlidon as the wind is blowing and the waves are beating against the ship and they're being tossed to and fro, if he would have said, you know what, Lord, enough's enough. I'm tired. I'm out here with 270-some men that didn't want to listen to me. A lot of you ladies sort of know how that feels, right? Having a man that doesn't want to listen to you. And so they said, he could have said, hey, I'm tired of this. Just, just end it. It's over. I don't want anything else to do with this. I don't want anything else to do with this journey. He would have never gotten to this point when he got to speak to these men. We have to make sure we stay in the battle, that we stay in the fight, that when we're tested and, then, and when we're tried, that we don't give up because there's someone on the end here that God's going to bring us to that's ready to hear the truth, that's ready to say, hey, I want to know what you have to say. What does the Bible say about going to heaven? And that's God's goal is to get us to them, but He has to test us and He has to try us before we get to that point. Now, on Sunday night, I told you that Wednesday we would look at the results of this meeting that Paul had. We will look at the results. We're going to do that on Sunday night, though. As I was reading the next verse, verse number 23, something stuck out to me. The Lord just, just put a spotlight on this verse for me. In verse number 23 of Acts 28, it says, And when they had appointed him a day. These men say, Paul, we want to go ahead and meet with you. We want to hear what you have to say about Christianity. And so they get together and they say, let's figure out a day when we can all get together. Let's look at our schedules and figure out when would be a good day to come back here to Paul's place. And we'll let Paul tell us all about Christianity and what he knows. Now, with that in mind, there had to be some preparation that was put into this meeting. I'm sure as soon as they said, all right, one week from today, 
or let's meet next Monday or whatever the day was. How about in a couple of days we come back to your house? As soon as Paul knew these guys are coming back, he knew I have to get prepared. And that's what I want to talk to you about is preparing for the appointed day. Because ultimately, there's an appointed day for our church coming up here. Monday, July 28th. At 6 o'clock, the doors are going to open and kids are going to come. Maybe some teenagers are going to come. Maybe some adults are going to come. We don't really know what the results are going to be Monday. We don't know what the results are going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. But we know that this is the appointed time. This is the time we've been working towards. This is the time we've been praying towards. This is the time that we've been putting all our effort towards. And now the appointed time is going to come, but we can't just open the doors and expect everything to happen and, hey, it's going to be okay because we've been uh, putting all this effort into the scripts. We've been putting all this effort into the scenery. We've been putting all this money into it. Hey, there's still some preparation that has to be put into this appointed time. Let me sort of put it to you this way. What if you had a family member, and maybe every one of us in here tonight has a family member like this, a family member that's not saved, and they called you up and they said, brother, or they said, sister, I want you to tell me about Jesus Christ. I'm going to get in my car, I'm going to hop on a plane, and I'm going to be to your place in a day or a couple of days. And you know what? I want to know... What it is you believe about this man, Jesus. What it is that makes you a Christian. Why you believe in this Christianity. I'm coming to your place to find out. Man, there would be some preparation that went into it. You wouldn't just get off the phone and say, all right, well, my brother who I've been praying for for years is coming out to my house. Great, that's great. I, well, let's go get the bedroom ready. Let's make sure the bathroom's clean. No, you would do some spiritual things. To make sure that things were ready or prepared. The first thing I, I believe that Paul did is, and, and the Bible doesn't say it here, so this is speculation on my part, I'm going to admit. But I believe he prayed, very first thing. Someone says, preacher, how do you know he prayed? Well, let's just look at Paul's epistles, his letters. Over 20 times Paul mentions prayer in his letters. Uh, turn over to uh, Philippians chapter number 4 real quickly with me. Philippians chapter number 4 and verse number 6. And before we read that, that verse, let me ask you something. And I, you don't have to answer audibly, but answer to yourself. Do you think that Paul, the apostle, one of the greatest men to ever preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, do you believe he was one of these preachers or one of these men that said, you do as I say, but don't do as I do? We've heard that before. Remember when you were growing up, maybe you had a, your dad, maybe your uncle, someone in your family had a bad habit. And they would tell you, don't do as I do, but do as I say. Stay away from this stuff. You don't want to do this stuff. But then, on the other hand, here they were doing it. Do you think Paul was a person who would say, you should do this, but I'm not going to do it? No, Paul practiced what he preached. In Philippians 4, 6, look at what he wrote to the Philippians. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. We could go through Paul's epistles, his letters tonight, and we could look at every time he mentions prayer. But let's be honest tonight, folks. Paul the Apostle, if we had to describe him tonight, one of the things we would say about him is he was a prayer warrior. He was in tune with God. You know how we know that he talked to God? Because God talked to him. God told him, you're going to Rome, Paul. God talks to people who talk to him. Someone says, man, I haven't heard God talk to me in a while. Maybe it's because you haven't talked to him in a while. God doesn't like these one-way one conversations. He doesn't like monologues. He likes dialogues where you talk and he talks where you say something and he responds. And so Paul says, hey, here in verse number 6, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. In other words, there's nothing too small to pray about. I guarantee you, looking back to Acts chapter number 28, I guarantee you that he began to pray. Not only because he was a prayer warrior, but also look at verse number uh, 22 of Acts 28 once again. Look at the very end of that verse. It says, these are the last words of these men. 
before they agree on a date when they're going to come back to Paul's house, they say, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. Paul, we want you to tell us about this Christianity. But to be honest with you, everything we've heard about it, it's spoken against. People are saying things against Christianity. People are saying things against Christians. Everything we know is contrary to Christianity. I guarantee you, Paul, as those men left his house, began praying, Lord, you have got to help me and give me wisdom. Because everything these guys have heard about Christians and Christianity is bad. You ever talked to one of those people before who they don't want to become a Christian because every Christian's a hypocrite? They don't want to go to church because church people are hypocrites. And so you try to talk to them, but you start thinking, man, how am I supposed to get through to this person? Because there's hypocrites everywhere, but how am I supposed to convince them? And you start praying, Lord, I don't know what to say to this person, but Lord, help me. I guarantee you, Paul began to pray and brought these men's names before the throne of grace and said, Lord, these men are chief men, chief Jewish men here in Rome, and all they've heard is bad things about Christians and bad things about Christianity. Lord, I need your help. By the way, tonight, I know I already mentioned it earlier in the service, but honestly, folks, before Monday night comes, we have got to get a hold of God. And we've got to ask Him to do something great. I'm excited about the theme this year, and I told you guys from the get-go that I think that the theme is, is going to be a big draw. I think that people are going to get these flyers, and they're going to see Captain America. And, and right now, superheroes, it's, it's a big thing in our country. It's a big fad. I think people are going to look at it and they're going to say, wow, this is great. In fact, on Saturday, Saturday morning, we went out and handed out flyers. And I went up the stairs at one of these apartment complexes, and there was a bunch of adults standing out there. And I handed one to this guy. He uh, sort of had a moppy-looking hair, and, and I handed one to him. I didn't see any kids anywhere. And I told him what was going on, and he said, hey, man, you can mark it down. My wife and I are going to come, and we'll see if we can get our kids to come too. He was so excited about it. And then as I'm walking down the stairs, I look up and I said, yeah, we were, I, I, this older gentleman, probably in his 60s or 70s, comes walking out the door. Sorry about saying older there. He, he more, more uh, gracefully uh, grown in the Lord, or I don't know how you say it, more wise. A wise man came out of the door, all right? And he has a, no, he wasn't that wise. He had a Batman shirt on. Sorry, he wasn't that wise. And he walks out and he has a Batman shirt on. I, you know, we almost did Batman. I start talking to him. And you know what? It was just amazing how that something like superheroes could open such a door for people to just start talking with you and cutting up with you. And I mean, it's like talking about the weather. It's like talking about sports. And these people were excited about it. And I believe that this is, the Lord could use this theme this year to really bring some people in. But once again, that's, the theme is not going to be what does the work in people's hearts. Captain America isn't going to change change one's, one person's heart this week coming up. It's going to be God. Amen. We've got to get a hold of God. Second thing, real quickly, if you look back to this text, in uh, verse number 23, it says, And when they had appointed him a day, they, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. I believe that, Paul not only prayed, but I believe he planned on what he was going to say. I believe he planned on what he was going to discuss with those men. In 1 Corinthians 14.40, Paul wrote, Let all things be done decently and in order. Paul, once again, now, I could be wrong, but I believe Paul was one of those guys that uh, if you would have gotten him up, he could take one a, a Bible verse and he could have preached all the way to the cross of Calvary. He could have preached anything. I believe that. But I believe Paul was a, a methodical preacher. I believe he was a prepared preacher. And honestly, when you look at it, at the end of verse number 23, it says that he tried to persuade these men that Jesus was the Christ, which remember it means Savior, that Jesus was the Savior or the Messiah, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets. So really, we're talking about pretty much all of the Old Testament. Today, if I asked you to prove to me that Jesus was the Messiah out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, out of the Old Testament, I don't want you to answer, but could you do it? 
that's pretty difficult. I mean, you have to know a lot. You really have to know your Scripture. Because there's a lot of Scripture in the Old Testament about the Messiah. There are hundreds of verses about the Messiah in the Old Testament. Paul didn't just, I don't believe he just said, you know what, I'm going to go into this meeting with these guys, and whatever comes to my mind, that's what I'm going to say. Now, I believe he was led of the Holy Spirit, but I believe he had a plan. Wow, I need, I need to make sure I'm brushed up on my Scriptures, because these are chief men. And if I start quoting Scripture and I quote it wrong, they're going to know that it's wrong. i got to make sure that I know the Word of God, that I'm studying it. By the way, just because you may deal with a child this next week, doesn't, it doesn't give you an excuse or give me an excuse to not know our Scriptures. Some of us haven't looked at the Romans Road in months because we haven't shown anybody how to be saved in months. And we think to ourselves, well, I can do it as soon as I sit down with one of those kids. I can do it. Hey, don't wait till you sit down with one of those kids. Over the next couple of days, brush up on it. Look over those verses. Make sure you know what you're going to say to these kids. Because guess what? Their eternity is in your hands. And you don't want to give them false hope. You don't want to have them pray a prayer but never truly get saved, as we know many people do. They pray a prayer but don't understand what salvation is. Hey, you want to make sure that when you explain it to someone, whether it's a kid or a teenager or an adult, that you know what you're saying and that you're showing them the Bible. Make sure that you are prepared in this area, that you plan on what you're going to say. And the final thing, I believe that Paul purposed that he was going to give his all. He purposed that he was going to give his all. Not only did he pray, not only did he plan on what he was going to say, but he purposed he was going to give his all. In verse number 23, once again, it says that he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets. And look at how that, how that verse, verse 23 ends, from morning till evening. If you think I go along, just, just wait until one day when we get to glory and you go to visit Paul's mansion in heaven. And you, get, and you knock on his door and you say, man, I've been wanting to meet Paul. And you go start talking to Paul, guess what? He might talk for all eternity, amen? By the way, why is it, so, why is it that we are so easily shut up when it comes to talking about God? Man, if I can talk about my favorite sports team and I can talk about the weather and I can talk about Captain America... I ought to be able to talk about my Lord and Savior who's done more for me than anybody else. Nonetheless, I believe he purposed that he was going to give his all. Hey, he started that morning. These guys sat down and he was trying to persuade them. Gentlemen, you've got to listen to me. This is what the Bible says in the book of Psalms. Of course, he referred to it as the Scripture. This is what the Old Testament Scriptures say in the book of Psalms. Here's what it says in the, the minor prophets. Here's what some of the major prophets like Isaiah say. Here, you've got to listen to me. You've got to listen to the law of Moses. And he's going back and forth. And all day he's trying to persuade them. He's giving everything he's got. At the end of Vacation Bible School, and I believe everybody in our church that's been involved in VBS before feels this way. When Friday comes... You're like, it was good, but man, it was tiring. By the way, if you get up on Friday morning and you don't feel that way, you probably didn't give your all to VBS. And you've got to purpose you're going to give your all. Someone said, Preacher, I'm working during the day. I understand that. Preacher, I'm only going to be able to be here for those two hours. That's fine, but the two hours you're here, say, God, I'm going to give my all. Man, I'm going to get excited. I'm going to sing those songs. Hey, if preacher calls me up and says he wants to put shaving cream on my head, I'm going to volunteer and let him put shaving cream on my head. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Got a few volunteers. All right. <laughs> Just say, I'm going to get my all. I'm going to get excited about this. Why? Because there's some little boy, some little girl that might get saved if I give my all. Amen. There might be some teenager that comes with their little brother or sister that's struggling to make it right now, right now. And they may have their life turned around because I give my all. There might be a mommy or a daddy that comes bringing their kids because they got a flyer. And right now they were going through a difficult time in their life. And honestly, they have no hope. But they're going to hear the preaching of the gospel. And they're going to see some people who have true joy, who have true hope. And their lives and their families might be changed 
Why? Because I give my all. Ultimately, that's what Paul, I believe, purposed. He's going to give his all. But it started with praying. It went on to planning. And then it finally ended with purposing to give his all. Let me encourage each and every one of you tonight, over the next week, do these three things. May it start, though, with your prayers. Because honestly, folks, and I include myself in this, I think so often we don't really put as much emphasis on prayer as we ought to. And we actually limit the power of prayer. Tonight we have the opportunity to go before the throne of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and ask Him to do something that we can't do. So let's do it. All right, let's pray. And then we'll have our, our prayer time. And I want to encourage you to just break up into with a prayer part.